that it would be... Yeah, it sounds like this Howard Hunt stuff, fa fabricating cables against uh, Kennedy and all that other kind of crap going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, and if Taylor didn't do that himself, and I find it doubtful that Taylor would do that, if he did do it himself, I find that real suspect of Taylor. I don't know whether he did it or not. But it would. Well, he's getting into a point of discussion that there, the, the, everything that went before it said we're not going to talk about shit. Right. And now they're going into a real touchy detail, you know, mm -hmm. that there's a hundred other things that could have been in the text that would be embarrassing. Say, here's this is embarrassing, this is embarrassing, and uh, it's not done mm -hmm. because you're not going to discuss embarrassing stuff that you're not going to discuss later on. Right. It just would uh, wouldn't even cover it broadly. It would just say it was that Eisenhower. Uh, the proper way is Eisenhower agreed that he's not going to come out with details to defend his end of the game or, or raise conflicts between yep. what the original plans were and what the original operation was compared to what, what the final outcome was. It's yeah. The same, same bullshit with the IG report. Yeah. That uh, unless you're in the know. You, you don't know why they kept that IG report down for 37 years, and it's not 90% of the content, you know, is mm -hmm. uh, fairly public knowledge. Mm -hmm. There were some very sensitive things in there in the one that was released, but there's more than one IG report, and the one yep. of the guys that authored it went into federal court in D.C. Mm -hmm. I offered the son of a bitch I want it released and that is not his report that was Lyman Kirkpatrick's report uh -huh. yeah. and there's more than one Inspector General's report uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, the, the, big, the big thing is that uh, nobody in 1960 contemplated doing a goddamn thing in Cuba mm -hmm. until there was an uprising underway mm-hmm and when I came out, and I was debriefed starting uh, around November of 60, you know, I'm, of course, uh, they told me, you know, all the stuff that even now, after the Records Review Board, they refused to declassify. They told me back in the 70s, well, if you want to look at your your files and your debriefings, you can come on up to Langley, and we'll get you an escort, and you can go look at the stuff. You yeah. know? But the stuff that I told them, especially about the aircraft and the, the situation, uh, there were people that were bombing the sugar cane fields, throwing, you know, and put, dropping incendiary devices and burning the cane fields, and a number of other things were going on, trying to bomb the sugar mills and, and what have you. And these people were aware of basically what Castro's defenses were and the fact that most of the aircraft had been dispersed around the cane fields. Uh, to protect them. Uh -huh. okay. So they weren't, the only thing that was sitting and not moving were 17 uh, P-47 Thunderbolts that nobody would fly. I had uh, one of them out at San Julian that I flew and la later wrecked it up a little bit. <laughs> and uh, uh, another one that was being flown, and only flown by the Nicaraguan pilots because the Cubans were afraid to fly the damn thing. <laughs> So we had the British Sea Furies, and we had the T-33s, and two P-51 Mustangs. Now, everybody I talked to, uh, I told them where the two Mustangs were. Nobody wants to talk about those two P-51 Mustangs, where they were, had they been taken out. You know, you, nobody's told the story, story yet. Mm -hmm. you know? It's just like uh, Carreras, he's uh, sleeping on a cot by his sea fury at San Antonio out at the end of runway 21, okay? <laughs> well, that's about 200 yards from a three-strand uh, uh, barbed wire fence that a cow could walk through <laughs> on the highway that leads into San Antonio de los Baños, the, the small town. <laughs> and there used to be a road that came directly in a straight line, but then that was closed off as a dead end, and you had to go in a long circular thing around the base to where the main entrance was on the complete opposite side. <laughs> but if anybody wanted to, they'd go straight ahead and cut the barbed wire, and it puts you right at the end of the damn runway. Uh -huh. They had not uh, 
put in uh, the proper anti-aircraft. They had not put in minefields. They had not even put guards along that perimeter fence, you know, mm-hmm. even up to the time of the Bay of Pigs. You know, anybody could have walked in there, knocked Carreras in the head, and stole the goddamn airplane. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, uh, it's, it's uh, silly shit that was going on. Yep. That, uh, I even hesitated to, uh, in talking to Eddie Ferrer or any of the other guys that were pilots on the, on the Puma operation, on the on the B twenty six operations. You know what what was, they were briefed on as compared to what their target selection was and what they told uh, battle damage estimates afterwards and all this kind of crap. Uh, they weren't sent to the right places to do the right job. Mm-hmm. Uh, who wants to keep that down? The fucking moles want to keep it down. Mm-hmm. The coward-ass bastards that were supposed to be doing the intelligence work on the island that were afraid to come out of the embassy, or if they were commercial cover, were afraid to go out and do their goddamn job. And they got Morgan in trouble, and they got Manoio in trouble, and they eventually got Carreras and, and uh, Morgan killed, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I... I, I was debriefed. I give them, hey, here's the aircraft, here's their side number, here, here is their mechanical state, whether they're under uh, repair or whether they're flyable, all over the goddamn island, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. plus, plus the information on uh, where spare parts were coming from and who in the U.S. was uh, facilitating uh, spare parts that were needed and the aircraft that were down because of lack of spare parts mm-hmm. and, and all this other bullshit mm-hmm. that... Uh, as it turned out, uh, Trujillo's people in the Dominican Republic had more accurate goddamn information than uh, our side did. Yeah. And they didn't bother uh, mm-hmm. to go and get it there. Okay, oh, just so I'm not confused here, when you're saying the, the information that you gave out gave at that time, that was in November of 60, yeah. and that was regarding the status of Castro's Air Force all throughout the island. Yeah, and, uh, and the armed forces and the militia. Okay. I was the only goddamn American that was uh, flying all over the island and doing any damn thing I wanted to do. Right. Now, I told him. I mm-hmm. told him what, the, and I did get a copy of that particular file where I said my recommendation is we uh, is not to supply the goddamn guerrillas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Get them off the fucking island. Mm-hmm. Get them involved in some revolutionary activity. It can be phony. You get them into Honduras, Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Let them have a go at uh, at Samoza. You know, uh, go mess around in Haiti or what have you. Let these guys build their own reputation over a period of months. Mm-hmm. Get them off. So, and that's why I told Morgan and the other people, get off the fucking island. Don't shit where you sleep. Right. You know. Right. Because the first people are going to. Uh, I I help run some guns into Duque and uh, Ramirez and some of the other guys that were going up into the mountains and all that shit. And I had a talk with them. Mm-hmm. I said, "You guys start stirring up some shit here, and the first people that Fidel or actually Raúl is going to send after you are your own friends, mm-hmm. the guys that were in the rebel army with you." You know, now, now these guys are suspect. They're mm-hmm. going to send all the guys that they're worried about out in the, out in front looking for you. So and when the shooting starts, who could give a shit who is who? You can't tell one one from another. You're going to there's going to be some firefight. So and these guys, these people, mm-hmm. get in the goddamn militia and screw around. Mm-hmm. Get in these uh, f- foreign elements like the Sandinistas or the. No, I, Jerry, I'm going to interrupt because I am getting a little lost, and that is due to my inability to follow, not your ability to report it, because I don't, and I don't want to get confused. What, okay, these guys that this you were... Is, I, what Eisenhower's people knew. Well, what I'm saying was this, these people that you were giving this advice to, to get off the island, okay, to do... They're anti-Castro people. Okay, they're anti-Castro people. Now, were they known, already known, to Castro and Raul, to Fidel and Raul? They were suspects. They were suspects, so That's they were... That's why I told them, get off the fucking island, because okay, so they, were we're never, they were either mm-hmm. uh, discharged from the army, okay. allowed to leave, or never allowed to hold a military post, even though they were allowed to wear uniforms and get pay, like the Second Front Escambray Minoyos people. Okay, so, so they were... The first were... guys to go back into the mountains uh, against Fidel were the former Second Front Escambray Morgan's uh, people and all that kind of stuff okay. in the center part of the island. Now, at that time, were you known to Raul and Castro and Fidel? Sure. 
Okay, and 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 what was? I was, a, I was asked uh, to make a choice, uh, either go back to San Julian Air Base where I belong, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, they they were asking me what the hell I was doing in in Havana, and I said, well, you know, Che knows what I'm doing. I don't want to come out and talk about these Nicaraguans and everything. I'd rather resign from the Air Force mm-hmm. and go on to uh, uh, fight in Nicaragua, and they accepted that. Okay, so back then. You and these other group that you were advising to get off the island were considered pro at that time, pro Castro. They were always considered anti-Castro, but the Batista bastards in Miami and Washington hated these people because they were former rebels, still had their long hair and beards, and they were the ones that had screwed up uh, Trujillo when he tried his phony little invasion. See, where I'm getting confused is this. Okay, what I'm I guess what I'm getting at is this. It did, okay, just, just talking about you. They fought with Fidel was being excluded. So how the fuck do you expect that they were going to send resupplies into them? They hated them. Okay, so they were supposedly on his side during the Batista thing. No, they weren't. They weren't members of the 26th of July. Okay, that's where I'm... Con- they were independent from day one. Okay. And some of them were in the mountains fighting Batista when Fidel was still fucking around in Mexico training. Okay. Some of these guys had already gone up in the mountains, which Fidel later on, his okay. boys were saying, oh, you bunch of cattle wrestlers, they call comilacas, cow okay. eaters. Okay, so these guys were, were, um, in it. Never Fidel's guys. They were, okay, but they, they were, were rebels. They, they were anti, Batista. they were anti-Batista, and yeah. they ended up being anti-Fidel as well. Yeah, they were pro-U.S. Gotcha. Okay, now I'm following you better. Okay. They're the only fucking ones that were guerrillas that uh, the Eisenhower people knew that were. But you had these elements in CIA and mm-hmm. and uh, military and what have you that didn't like the fact that we were going to go down and support what they called fidelismo without Fidel. That we were going to mm-hmm. support former adherents or rebels. Mm-hmm. They figured if you fought against Batista, you were pro Fidel. They couldn't grasp the situation, the reality oh, okay. of the situation. Washington could. So, uh, I, w- I question the fact that uh, the airdrops were not being successful and that the guerrillas were not being supported, which I was against anyway, because mainly the pilots uh, that were flying and the crews that were airdropping were from Batista bastards that had been shooting it out with these people just a couple years before. <laughs> okay. You know? And you're expecting these Batista bastards to resupply rebels? <laughs> fought against them. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't until some of the former rebels came out that things really started cranking up. But the problem was, they made sure that the biggest batch of rebels, Manoyo's people, were sitting in McAllen, Texas, at an immigration detention center, you know, and were kept out of the Bay of Pigs. So that's part of the reason for your interest in the customs and INS docs, is that? Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. This is the shit that they're covering up. I got gotcha. you. shows the presence of fucking moles, not stupidity. Right. So it wasn't so much a fiasco as an operation that was designed to fail. Yeah. It was, pre- it was prevented. When people say, let's get rid of these people, uh, who's saying, was, was Bobby Kennedy or Jack Kennedy saying, let's get rid of the, the, these uh, Cubans? Fuck no. You know, they were mm-hmm. commit, committed from day one. Uh-huh. But they were being told a completely different goddamn story. Uh-huh. What the reality of the situation was. And it's frustrating for me because my intelligence contacts are mostly Republican type people, you know, mm-hmm. that weren't too happy that uh, uh, the election had been lost to Kennedy. You mm-hmm. Know, mm-hmm. And they were really dreading. And some, some of them were kind of sitting back saying, Kennedy's going to fuck up and we'll impeach his ass. Uh-huh. You know? I mean, uh, you can't... T- what? You really can't get serious with these assholes with that kind of crap going on. Yeah. I said, I'll go back in. I'm not going to go back in in place. Okay? Uh-huh. I said, if i got to go back in, I've got to go to Honduras and inside Nicaragua or work with the Sandinistas for at least two months before I go back to Cuba. And they didn't want to go for that shit. Uh-huh. Because it might have worked. Yeah. Yeah. Because it might have worked. excuse is, well, we're relying on Samosa to support us uh, for uh, operations in, uh, inside Cuba. And I'm thinking, well, the fuck are these guys are crazier than shit. Samosa ain't going to support former fucking rebels when half of them 
were crossing his own border, uh-huh. uh, fi- fi- supporting uh, the Sandinistas. He had enough trouble keeping himself alive. Yeah, I mean, uh, the guy's now, got his hand out, hand out for money, and he's surrounded by assholes that are that are sellouts. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what did what did Fidel and Raúl think of you? Did they think that you were anti-Batista and pro-Fidel, or what did they, what did they think? You know what I'm saying? I mean, the only thing they thought most of the time was, don't embarrass me by inviting me to jump out of a fucking airplane, big man. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing I had in mind, and, and Jay was the first one to admit, it, yeah, we're nervous around you because you're going to open. Someday you're going to come out and say, hey, let's go up and make a parachute jump. We're <laughs> about to jump out of a fucking airplane. So they trusted you? Yeah. It, it just out of curiosity, I went on the Dominican fucking operation. I went on the Haitian operation. I was in support of this, uh, the Nic- and I submit to the Sandinista operations. Trained the fucking Sandinista. Urged the creation of a fucking militia. Uh-huh. Got the parachutes transferred from the army over to the fucking air force. Uh-huh. You know, I'm the only American roaming around. Uh-huh. And I finally got Morgan straightened out. Uh-huh. So you want to sit in this fucking penthouse until you rot and end up getting in goddamn trouble? Well, yeah. I want to go talk to Fidel and say, hey, I want to do something, which he ended up uh, uh, being given a bunch of money to set up the Sprague farm and all this other bullshit. I told him, you're uh-huh. never going to have a fucking military command, uh-huh. and especially uh, on the paratroop thing. I'm getting the paratroops mm-hmm. pulled out of the fucking army and over to the Air Force, mm-hmm. but you're not going to be allowed anywhere around that. Nobody in Second mm-hmm. Son Escombrais ever going to mm-hmm. hold a military command. Mm-hmm. Now, i got to ask this question. i got to ask this question for context for me so that I can understand something, okay? Was your role in your own in your own mind, between your own two ears, okay, were you at that time working for Angleton? No, no, I had no... Okay. I'm, I, when you're in that business there to stay alive and all that, mm-hmm. you got to be genuinely for the operation. As far as I had to keep in my head was this it was just an extension of, like, the American Revolution. We were going after the bad guys. Latin America was full of bad guys. Okay. I also wanted to be around to see how this place might possibly change into a communist state. Okay. Because the politics of Latin America, if you've never never been there and you're a young American, mm-hmm. and, uh, I mean, and <laughs> until they adapted it from... Uh, the Latin American and the Cuban scene, there's never been such a thing in the United States as, as uh, picket signs other than union stuff, uh-huh. uh, marches, parades, and all those demonstrations, and all this kind of horse shit. Uh, there was just a touch of it uh, before World War II. But, so when you went over... I'm not running around there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring uh, while, while I'm here, I have to keep in my mind, okay, that I'm building something here but someday I'm going to have to come back, and it ain't going to be in a friendly way. Okay. And my moves were all geared to... Someday I'm, I jumped on drop zones mm-hmm. uh, all over the goddamn island. Mm-hmm. Checked beaches, swam, did mm-hmm. all the UDT-type stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, checked bridges for demolition later on. Okay, now I'm confused again, but it's not I'm your... Doing, I'm doing this. It's so not your reportage. If i got to come back, but as far as uh, reporting mm-hmm. reporting to somebody having a case... No, I was a singleton. I don't have no case officer. I don't go around running around reporting like some James Bond spy. Well, I, I guess what I'm asking is, between your own two ears, I understand that you're... In a sense, you compartmentalized that you were genuine when you were there. I, yeah. Okay, what I was saying is this. No was it because you were a mercenary? No, there's no money in it. Okay, so it wasn't because you. I got sixty-five dollars a month. Okay, so can you can you pop out of the compartmentalized status in a sense in your in your mind and fill me in on the overview? In other words, when you said that one day you figured you'd be coming back and you were not going to be coming back a nice guy, yeah. does that mean this that while you were playing the role, playing the role of getting inside? the Castro organization. You've got to be one of them. Okay, but that was a role you were... It was like passing a lie detector test or something. Yeah. No way your eyes or body right. English or anything can give away other right. than that you are loyal and you're doing the best job. And you're pissing people off by insisting on things that they're not ready for. Okay. 
you know. Okay, now what? to some of them because they had no military background. And yet, it gave you a whole hell of a lot of credibility. Exactly. Because, because the, I'm, right. I'm, uh, I'm showing them where their weaknesses are and who their weak kneed bastards are and who yep. the people that are giving me fucking problems yep. and what, what should be done. Yep. You know? I said, you know, you want to defend this goddamn country? Here's what you got to do. Okay, so now you weren't reporting back to anybody, but did anyone, and I'm not asking for a name, I'm just saying, were you in a sense set in motion at some point? Because you were never a communist or pro-communist, but you were helping to establish that. Long before I went to Cuba, I had discussions with Frank Wesner and uh, with uh, uh, Angola when he came back from Italy. Okay. Wesner had just uh, gotten out of the hospital in '58 as I was leaving the Marine Corps and getting involved in the, in the Cuban business. Uh-huh. You know, and I had a vague idea who the fuck they were. Uh-huh. Because at that time, Angola and we were working for Harvey. Mm-hmm. You know, but. Uh, I gotta go back and check mm-hmm. and uh, see who the hell these people are. Years later, you know, I'm not beer, beer drinking buddies. As people, I say, I say when I get into a conversation in Georgetown or sitting in somebody's living room and discussing this or that, I point out to where they're totally fucking wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I enjoyed so, myself with some of these people because they didn't know shit from China, and it was their job to know it. Okay, so now a lot of times I didn't know. Mm-hmm. that uh, it was their job to know these specific things because I knew what compartmentalization is. But you knew that they didn't know shit from anything. Didn't know a goddamn thing. Yeah. So when you went in there, you went in there well, as I a... I knew that when I was on the fucking... Island. By the time I'd been on the island for a while mm-hmm. and seeing some of this other snooping and pooping going around where they're trying to recruit Morgan and, and some of the other guys, I mean, there's guys that I could have uh, busted and... Uh, mm-hmm stood up against the wall myself, I knew we were working for the American government, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and uh, they were putting their ass on the line in a very stupid fucking way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't, they, some of uh, these people, uh, the Batista-oriented people, had nothing but contempt mm-hmm. for Castro's people, mm-hmm. and this is what suckered uh, Trujillo and the, and the Dominican operation in July of 59. They thought, these clowns don't know shit. It's kind of like Mogadishu. Mm-hmm. These assholes, a bunch of niggers, don't know shit from Shinola. Mm-hmm. We can get away with anything, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, <laughs> they blew it. Because they are the ones who didn't know anything. I mean, I, I could sit and say what uh, Fidel and the boys knew and didn't know, but uh, mm-hmm. there's no way in hell some other gringos could, because they, they didn't know. But they thought they did. They thought they did. Yeah, yeah. And they had no fucking respect at all for the capability. These people like to fight. So, yeah. They get pretty good at it in a hurry. They hadn't studied the, the fight, the, the operations in the Sierra Maestra, the Tristal, or the Urbanos out in the western part of Cuba, or the Escambray. Mm-hmm. They hadn't done a serious study of the, what the revolution they were saying. A bunch of goddamn uh, cattle rustlers bribed a bunch of goddamn soldiers, and then they marched on fucking Havana, and mm-hmm. a crooked half-nigger took off with a bunch of bucks, and that's how it happened, and that's the end of the story. <laughs> I mean, that was their attitude. Right, 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 right. And you could tell by some of the questions and debriefing what the attitude was that they didn't know shit from China. Mm-hmm. They were too afraid to run around in the goddamn island and figure out what was going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and then they find out I got my picture taken down alongside Mick Oyan and Fidel out at my air base in Pernod de Rio, and they went ape shit, you know. That you did? They figured, though, no, how, what, American could, what American could get away with shit like that? Yeah, who went ape shit? The CIA, when they found out the, that you, when, when oh, one of the oh. guys defected who was on the base with me, oh. so I had asked to send his reinforcements for the air base because I needed more people there. Uh-huh. He had defected to the CIA and he had taken some pictures when Fidel and Nikoyan came in on this Russian helicopter to look at the base. Uh-huh. You know? No, they were mostly pissed off that I didn't take them out when they landed on the fucking base. You would have gotten your brains blown out in, in New York no, second. No, no, no. What really pissed them off is I had a sergeant by the name of Toledo that was manning the machine gun up in the control tower. Uh-huh. These were weapons we had captured from people that had come in from the Dominican Republic or from Miami, mass for air people that had landed, and, and we'd had skirmishes with them, and, and then Trujillo and some others had done some airdrops, 
and we're getting these World War II German weapons and shit. Mm-hmm. And I put this one machine gun up in the tower, mm-hmm. and then when the helicopter came in and I saw it was Fidel and Mikoyan and uh, Alexia, who was the interpreter, uh-huh. uh, I sent a guy up real quick to get this nutball mm-hmm. out from behind the goddamn machine gun because he didn't like Fidel. Uh-huh. You know? So like uh, Captain uh, Oculus Chinea, Mm-hmm. He's the guy that later defects, who was heading up the rural police academy. Mm-hmm. He took the took the pictures, which he told me about later on when I went to Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the one that told how uh, a nutball could have taken everybody out with a G- uh, MG thirty four World War two German machine gun up in the control tower, and that had been the end of the ball game right there. Mm-hmm. Well, so totally full of shit because if Raul had been in charge at that point in time which was February 1960 it's just before the Lacubre incident mm-hmm. the French ship munition ship uh, if Raul was really the only guy and uh, not under uh, Fidel's control that place would have really been a, r- a rough nut mm-hmm. because Fidel and all these other assholes made mistakes Raul didn't make mistakes uh-huh. If he was in charge of the goddamn place, it had really been uh, uh, a nasty business. So the agency was pissed off because you were in a picture and it was showing... Well, I had more than one opportunity to take Fidel out. Me yeah. and Morgan stood uh, right alongside Fidel when this uh, munitions bunker blew up in Havana Harbor. Uh-huh. And we're standing there, and even Morgan jokingly uh, uh, commented, standing there by uh, his Jeep, yeah, uh-huh. He says, all you got to do is reach over there, and the time, your Tommy gun's laying on the hood, uh-huh. squeeze the trigger, and it's all over. Uh-huh. And I said, yeah, look up at the top of the hill there and see how many other people that uh, we got to go by to get the hell out of here alive. Right, right. So we're kind of joking with one another. Right. You know? Right. But word would get out on these things, opportunities to have, t- and the big thing about taking Fidel out and how many opportunities were lost. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm supposed to be some kind of fucking kamikaze. Right. You know? That wasn't part of the plan. And then later, when, uh, uh, in 61 and 62, I'm counseling everybody against taking Fidel out. Mm-hmm. And that pisses a bunch of people off. Mm-hmm. He said, if you don't take out Raul first, uh-huh. you're in a world of, sh- world of shit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because he's the one with a brain. Uh-huh. And the one that was released, but there's more than one IG report, and the one yep. of the guys that authored it went into federal court in D.C. Mm-hmm. Say, I authored the son of a bitch. I want it released, and that is not his report. That was Lyman Kirkpatrick's report. Uh-huh. You know, and there's more than one Inspector General's report. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. See, the, the big the big thing is that. Uh, Nobody in 1960 contemplated doing a goddamn thing in Cuba mm-hmm. until there was an uprising underway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I came out, and I was debriefed starting uh, around November of 60, you know, I'm, of course, uh, they told me you know, all the stuff that even now, after the Records Review Board, they refused to declassify. They told me back in the 70s, well, if you want to look at your... Your files and your debriefings, you can come on up to Langley and we'll get you an escort and you can go look at the stuff. You know? But the stuff that I told them, especially about the aircraft and the, the situation, uh, there were people that were bombing the sugar cane fields, throwing, you know, and put, dropping incendiary devices. That it would be. Yeah, it sounds like this Howard Hunt stuff, uh, fabricating cables against uh, Kennedy and all that other kind of crap going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, and if Taylor didn't do that himself, and I find it doubtful that Taylor would do that, if he did do it himself, I find that real suspect of Taylor. I don't know whether he did it or not. 
Very good. Uh, as Eisenhower agreed that he's not going to come out with details to defend his end of the game or, or raise conflicts between yep. what the original plans were and what the original operation was compared to what, what the final outcome was. It's yeah. The same, same bullshit with the IG report. Yep. That uh, unless you're in the know, you, you don't know why they kept that IG report down for 37 years, and it's not 90% of the content, you know, is mm -hmm. uh, fairly public knowledge. Mm -hmm. There are some very sensitive things in there. It's getting into a point of discussion that there, the, everything that went before it said we're not going to talk about shit. Right. And now they're going into a real touchy detail, you know, Mm -hmm. that there's a hundred other things that could have been in the text that would be embarrassing say here's this is embarrassing this is embarrassing and uh, it's not done mm -hmm. because you're not going to discuss embarrassing stuff that you're not going to discuss later on right it just would uh, wouldn't even cover it broadly it would just say it was that Eisenhower uh, the proper way 